What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? Happy Monday, good afternoon, and all those other positive tidings as we approach the start of actual concrete football action. We've been in this holding pattern for a while now, talking about things that might happen for the most part, talking about things that we hope will happen Tomorrow, players report to training camp and practice begins on Wednesday. Uh, it's already started for some teams. It's going to start a little later for some other teams. It's it's staggered a little bit, but um, the Seahawks players are going to report, I believe, tomorrow, and the first practice is on Wednesday, so we're right there. We are right on the precipice, right on the brink of actually getting some stuff to digest that's solid, and... It's been a pretty slow month for the most part for Seahawks fans. We've mostly been looking at what other teams are doing, like the Cardinals with their Kyler Murray extension. So when you get something that's even a little bit tangible, you can't help but sink your teeth into it a little bit. So when I saw this, it normally uh, Ian Rappaport story wouldn't really register that much with me. I would look at it for two seconds and then move on with my day, but... To a starving man, any piece of meat looks like a feast, I guess. So, what we have here is a little bit of confirmation, at least from Rappaport, that something is happening between the organization and DK Metcalf, which, if it's true, is actually kind of newsworthy because from my perspective as a fan of this team and as somebody who follows the team pretty closely, I wasn't sure if anything was going on or not. So, uh, Condota sums up this uh, clip from a Good Morning Football with uh, Rappaport where he says the Seahawks want to get DK Metcalf paid and that the two sides have been in talks on a new contract. No new deal yet, though, with the player set to report on Tuesday and first practice on Wednesday. Now, this is another one of those things where people are saying that something is in the process of happening, but it hasn't happened yet. So, if it happens, then they can say, hey, I called it. And if it doesn't happen, then they can say, well, hey, I said that it was in progress. I didn't say it was done. Something changed. So it's one of those things where it's like no matter what happens, you can say, hey, hey, I was right. I, I was right. It doesn't matter what actually happens after. However, this caught my attention a little bit because until I saw this, I hadn't really heard anything that indicated the two sides were moving towards an actual contract. I was actually under the impression that things were very quiet on this front, almost as if there was no negotiation going on. So this, even though it's just one of those fluff reports, caught my attention. So this indicates to me that we are moving along on the expected uh, time timetable, where for whatever reason, and people have been talking about this a lot in the last several days, the... Um, the Seahawks like to sign their big-name players after training camp starts. Jamal Adams last year was a good example of that. We waited until he actually started doing his little hold-in before we gave him his money. I don't know why we do it that way. Maybe we feel like we can get them to come down a couple million bucks if we do it that way. Maybe we feel like it's... Maybe there's some something in the NFL... Contract rules, the salary cap rules, we're waiting a couple extra months is good. I don't see how that could possibly be true. But for some reason, the Seahawks like to push it to training camp before they hand out their big money extensions. So I don't know why that's their process, but it is. And ultimately, at the end of the day, if they get the player signed, then it doesn't really matter. So I'm not going to really critique it. I'm going to let this play out. And this report is the first even semi-concrete indication that the Seahawks are actually working with Metcalf towards a new contract. And I feel like the template for a new contract has been established fairly well when you look at what guys like Terry McLaurin and um, um, A.J. Brown got. It should be in that general area, maybe a little bit more because it's a little bit later, but not a lot more. It's going to be a little bit less than what Devontae Adams got and Cooper Cup got. Those guys have credentials. Those guys have accomplished things that Metcalf has simply not done yet. But it'll be somewhere between those two. It'll be somewhere probably between the A.J. Brown contract and the Cooper Cup contract. And I'm totally fine with that. 
When it comes to a player like a DK Metcalf, I'm not grandstanding over a couple million dollars or even a couple million dollars a year. I think it's far more damaging to overpay a mid-level or even a low-level player by a couple million than it is to overpay a top player like a Metcalf by a cup overpay him by a couple million. So at the end of the day, as long as this isn't like some obscene $35 million a year, year contract or I don't know where I would draw the line, maybe $30 million. If it's not something like that, I'm not really going to get too upset about it. At the end of the day, you do have to invest significant amounts of money into your top players that are in their prime. And it's on you to be able to draft well enough to keep up with the demands of an NFL roster with a smaller slice of the salary cap available to you. And this team has no quarterback for the foreseeable future that is making big money, so that frees up a huge chunk of money you didn't have before. So this has to be a little bit encouraging. I know that some people are starting to get a little discouraged on the Metcalf front. They're starting to feel like, oh, the fact that we haven't re-signed him yet and we're not hearing anything about it means that we don't want to extend him. Uh, a lot of people are saying, uh, maybe now we're going to trade him, which at this point I think trading him would almost certainly be a terrible idea. If you wanted to trade him, trade him during the draft. Um, don't trade him now to like Green Bay and you end up with the 30th overall pick two years in a row. Who cares? That's not as good as a Metcalf. Not, not, not with our track record of drafting in that area of the first round either. If you're going to be, if we're going to talk about that, um, but this is something that I hadn't seen ever since this whole thing started. Back when I guess you could say Metcalf decided to not show up for the uh, OTAs. Uh, when that happened, it became clear that it was time for rubber to meet the road. It was time for pen to meet paper. Something needed to get done because Metcalf was not going to be willing to play on the fourth year of his deal like Dak Prescott did. So from that point on, it's been very quiet on the Metcalf front. And I don't blame some people for starting to feel like maybe we're trying to find some way we don't have to pay him. But I, again, I just feel like if you were going to do that, the time was the draft. It's too late now. And all you're gonna, if you try to force him to play on the fourth year of his deal, all you're going to do is irritate him. All you're going to do is make him unhappy and make it more expensive later, if not impossible, to keep him if he has a good year, which even though we've taken a step back at quarterback for sure, I, I, I think he's going to have a very good year if he can stay healthy. So we're right on the edge of training camp. It starts, um, well, it doesn't start tomorrow, but players start to report tomorrow, and then we're going to start to see some on-field action, at least some Wednesday on. So uh, I'll have another video tomorrow talking about training camp a little bit, what to expect, what I'm looking for. And yeah, if you were one of the people who was wondering where the Metcalf thing was going to go, it sounds like it's going to go the place it seemed very clear it was going to go ever since the draft passed without us moving him. So let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know what you guys are taking away from this. And, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm happy with it. At this point, with what the Titans got with A.J. Brown, it doesn't seem like the big trade offers are on the table for young uh, elite receivers. So I don't think Metcalf would fetch any more in a trade than A.J. Brown did. So if that's all you can get, then you're better off just giving him the money and figuring it out. It's easy for us to figure it out. We don't have an expensive quarterback and probably won't for like four years. So... Let's, let's take advantage of that. We can give more money to players like this. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks.